Welcome back to Retro Wednesday at the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about this shelf I just built for a corner shelf. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I did it. Number one, I wanted to utilize this space for display, not just for storage. So, yeah, it's a while to relocate the stuff to store it somewhere else, but to display something that I felt I wasn't giving enough room to. So, that's one. Number two, I set out looking for a corner storage and I couldn't find one anywhere in my town, online, it just stupid expensive and didn't fit my space. So I said build mine, build to suit. So that's what I did here. So today on Retro Wednesday we're going to hang out, build a corner shelf by someone who is not a carpenter, does not work in construction. I just kind of do this kind of stuff and make it work. Anyway, I may, might have some tips and tricks for you, but we're also going to be talking about vintage stuff. And I've always got about eight projects going on. I usually have to stop my projects to make YouTube videos. And this week I said, no, I'm going to do the video and the project. Let's hope it works out. And we'll see. Coming up. All right. So I've got this empty space over here in the collection room. And it's got a lot of issues with it being in the corner here i can't just put in a standard shelf you buy at the walmart or some people buy stuff at ikea for a lot more money but still with this i can't put one of those in here it's just not a big enough space plus I, it's a corner i want to make full use of all of the space in the corner and i want to make it look like it belongs here and it fits here and it was supposed to go here and all of this kind of stuff so i did check around no place around here carries a corner shelf might be able to order one online for crazy amounts of money but why not just build one myself for about 30 bucks so I, why don't i build it for 30 bucks exactly what i need and i can't find anywhere on the planet to fit it exactly that's what i'm gonna do so first thing i'm gonna do here is get some measurements and i measured everything and i'm created a template so this template that i created is basically based off of some measurements so this template that I created is based off of some measurements that I took and then I went and I got this piece of wood right here and I went to Home Depot. I found the smaller piece of wood for 22 bucks and that's gonna make two of the three shelves. I already had a piece of wood about the right size, so I'm cutting it all down. So what's gonna happen here is that it's gonna fit in this space. It's gonna fill this whole space. Then I'm gonna cut this section off myself with my hand saw Table saw would be better, but I'm, I, I don't have one. So I'm using a hand saw. It's going to be a little curvy. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll get the job done. I did a lot of the stuff cut by hand for my flag. So not really that big of a deal. And a lot of this wood, some of this wood is leftover wood from the flag project, raising the flag. So basically with designing a corner shelf, one of the things that I thought about was you need support over here on this side. You need support over here on this side. And then you need some support and I'm thinking you would need support here and over here. So uh, there's a couple of different ways to go about it, but there's a third way to do it, which it actually works just as well. So you can actually put a support in there. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm short a couple pieces of wood, uh, but I'm going to have a support on this side, a support on this side, and then I'm going to connect them with some hardware. Here's the hardware I'm going to use to connect it. And of course, I'm going to get all this stuff painted cut everything exactly right and hopefully works and then of course like i always do put some prints in it to spice it up a bit now obviously you can build it and then completely remove your shelves and everything on it and then put it in place and then put your shelves in place that's one way to do it or you can build it in place like i'm going to do so anyway with this what, what i'm going to do is to get this last cut but to make it work perfect in this space i'm going to pull this forward and then i'm going to mark the areas that I need to cut. So I'm gonna make a cut starting from here and I'm gonna cut to over here where this shelf sort of starts. No, I'm definitely not a carpenter by trade, but simple enough things like this, I'm sure I can accomplish. Do the same thing on the other side. Then once I remove it, I will take a straight edge so that I have a guideline for when I cut this and on all this, that whole section is gonna be gone. Okay, so here's kind of a rough, just setting it in and see if it supports itself and if the it's all going to work out. I think I want a few more pieces of wood in here, so I think that's kind of what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is put uh, more wood, 
but I want to kind of keep an open space. So my mindset here, because this is a quarter shelf that I'm building, if something falls back behind it, because it is not going to be, there's gonna be a bit of a gap behind it, and something falls back there, I want to be able to get it without disassembling the shelf, taking everything apart. So I'm gonna I'm gonna engineer that into the bottom of the shelf. So where you see this one here, I'm actually gonna have that as the back piece. I'm gonna have another piece over here, and there's gonna be a way to get an access to it. So that's kind of still under construction in my plan, trying to figure out where to put all these boards. I probably need a few more boards. So looking at my template and kind of how that, that's gonna work, uh, I could cut that right there. And I don't want this in here. So although I set it up, I don't want that edge. I want it to look like it's connecting this shelf directly to this shelf right here. And so setting this up kind of like this, this actually is less stable than it will be when I get rid of this. So it'll be supported here and it'll be supported over here. So. That's kind of how I'm working on it. I think it'll work out. Okay, so I ran downstairs and I cut this piece of wood and I wanna say it's not perfect because I cut it by hand with my saw, my hand saw, but it's not bad. Um, it, it is electric. But the thing about this is that a table saw would have done a better job and maybe I should have just gone to one of my buddies' houses. I got a lot of buddies in carpentry, but I don't like bothering them and I think I'm almost embarrassed to say, hey, will you help me make this silly cut? So the next thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna slide this one up here. now. Uh, these are different types of wood because because I already had this one. This is more like particle board. If particle board gets wet, it's pretty much gone. So uh, definitely, definitely, I don't expect moisture damage, but moisture damage, some regular wood, certain wood will handle it better. Particle board won't handle it at all. So what I'm going to do here is use this as a template. I'm going to line up everything and then I'm going to draw a line with this. Even though this isn't perfect, it's still going to get you from one point to the next. So get it lined up. And draw me a line. And then I'm gonna cut the other two and then paint it and then wait for the paint to dry. I should do a couple coats of paint. Okay, so I got all my three main shelves cut and I wanna say that this particle board sucks. It was hard to get straight. The other two are straighter. This one was a challenge. So anyway, I'm gonna sand it and try to make it look as good as I can. But they're close enough, as you can see, there's slight variations in each one, which won't be that big of a deal when they're 16 inches apart. It will be, well, not so noticeable. But the edge needs to look finished. It needs to look a little bit better. So sanding on that, I'll do a little bit of that later on. But now we're gonna get into painting the better ones right now. So this is my little paint station. Uh, people will say you need to prime it and all this kind of stuff. I just don't. So anyway, I'm gonna shake it up real good. I use the Walmart $1 paint. Now it's $1.50 inflation, but it, I, this is how I painted all the shelves, all the things that I use, and it works. It just takes a lot of time getting the sides real good and all that. I actually have other tricks for the sides, and it just takes time and a lot of paint. And I'm going to just do this over and over and over. Two, three coats for each piece of wood, which is kind of what's going to take a long time. So this does absorb the paint and you need to periodically shake that bad boy. But I've had really good results doing this uh, on my risers that I use on the shelves and occasionally on the shelves themselves. So it's just, yeah, I don't think you wanna watch this. It's more boring than watching the sausage get made. So as much as I complain about the particle board, oddly enough, that absorbed the paint better so it's probably gonna take less coats. I'm still gonna coat it the same as the rest of them, but kind of impressed with that. And while I watch the paint dry, I guess I'm gonna go work on a video with some perceptors or something. All right, so I've got all the wood painted and more or less ready to go. I found a couple more pieces. I think I'm still gonna be short a little sliver of wood there, but it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting it in with hardware. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put these pieces in on the bottom first, and I'm gonna make sure it's all lined up. I'm gonna drill a guider hole, and then I'm gonna just put the screws in, and then I'll come back and we'll do the top. So again, I'm not quite a carpenter, but basically what I did is I put in the hardware here. I, I gotta put hardware on that one, and then I'm just gonna screw it all in. The hardware is not what holds it and supports it. What supports it is the wood, the side wood, and uh, so anyway, I'm gonna get on with the next piece. Well, I do have to put the hardware on that still. And then I think I'm gonna be putting this piece in place. So, the way that's gonna work is all of this fun stuff is gonna go in here. 
as I'm putting this together, I'm thinking it might have been worth time to do take two hours out of the day to move the entire collection and build this uh, proper and then just put it in. But it's going to work in the end. It's not that big of a deal. So I ran into some issues. This board is a little bit more. It's like 16th and something, a fraction. So uh, I'm going to shave it down a little bit. But uh, anyway, the rest of it kind of went in. And we're going to work on the top part. And I'll probably get this board in there later. It's sort of built. Uh, the hardware is going to be covered up either by a couple of things. But uh, I could just paint it black and it would just hide in the background. But I gave it a good, quick wipe down. So here's my shelf overall. Not perfect. Uh, not exactly what I was expecting. And right here in this area, I actually plan to put one more board. And I have a plan to, like, if something falls back there, to just unscrew those, pull a board out or whatever. And the rest will still support the whole, whole structure. That was my design. So I will probably eventually put that board in, but I can put my background in without that board. That's fine with me. So I did come up with one other thing. What happens to the corner edge piece when I cut it off? So right here, this piece I just cut off by hand and that's a imperfect cut. So what are you gonna do with this? Well, I thought it would be really cool if you could maybe flip it around. Let's move the camera here and then use it as a, as a maybe a stand or elevation you can lift something up a riser and put it in the back right i thought man that would be really really cool so i did that and then i have i made a smaller one to go back behind it but one of the things was these at target they had these these are five dollars these hearts they were 90 percent off so 50 cents a piece and it gives it nice little i don't know a little something better than just like a two by four and it elevates it up but I'm also going to show what the next level would look like and I'm back. Okay. So there's the smaller one. That's what it's going to look like. Whew, people say I'm out of breath. That's because I sprint up the stairs and then hit record like an idiot. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do the same thing down below here. This one's already been painted more or less. So obviously we're going to be covering up some of the hardware like this. Now there, I got to finish painting the rest of this. But I thought it looked kind of cool. And one more thing is if I had to do it again, I would like to do asymmetrical. Like this is symmetrical. It's going to be fine when I'm done. It's going to look okay symmetrically and all that kind of stuff. When everything's in here, the background and all that, you're not really going to be thinking about it. But let's say I had like a triangle coming out this direction on this side and then a triangle coming out this direction on that side. And it was asymmetrical. That would have probably looked a little bit better. So in the future... I mean, obviously this is not a built-in. These are just stackable items. I could just redo this in the future if I choose to after looking at it for so long, but we'll see. Okay, so I got some backgrounds put in. So it's kind of a post-apocalyptic uh, along with some of the tags with the spiral zone on it and all that kind of stuff. So uh, up here we got some zone generators, another zone generator, just kind of making it look like it's an evil bad guy. We've got the bad guy symbol right there. So all of this is pretty fun. I do need to do a little more work like up here. I need to repaint uh, like a side of that extra elevation up there that I'm going to use. And I'm going to throw some Captain Power up there. And the whole point of this isn't really just for Spiral Zone. So this is my current shelf. It is okay. I mean, it's, it's nice, but they're just crammed on there. It doesn't look good. And multiple vehicles shoved in one spot. And still, I don't even have it all on one shelf. I got some stuff over here with Rambo, but I got future plans for Rambo and it really needs to be freed up. So it's like a two or three part thing. So basically I have a mixture of vintage and modern, well, 2008, if you want to call that modern, but uh, the Indiana Jones stuff is going to go there. The vintage will go in the vintage room. I'll expand this, uh, dial this out. Basically this display and the vintage display will almost be exactly the same, except they'll have modern characters and well modern characters so way more but that's another side effect or a happy accident of making this new display all right so here we go we got put together we've got some elevations put in there we have backgrounds in there and so all we really need is to put in the figures and all that kind of stuff so that's kind of the next step now here's the thing i've always got multiple things going on that he-man custom i was actually let the paint dry at the same time. So now I've got a He-Man custom project going at the same time as this, same time as a bunch of other projects. So still kind of fun. It's kind of fun, kind of 80s and kind of modern all at the same time. 
All right, so more or less, this is the end result. So this is the shelf. It's built. It's pretty solid. I've got some figures in there. And so pretty exciting, pretty fun. It's nice to actually see it come together. Kind of was going for a post-apocalyptic look. Uh, down below, more realistic up top. Screen grabs from the cartoon. At least this way you can actually kind of see the figures and they're not all just crammed in there. But then again, that's how the rest of my shelves look. They're just crammed in there. But these figures are a little bit bigger, so I do like to see them a little bit more. And up top here, uh, I kind of think I'm not utilizing the space well enough. So obviously, anytime you do anything like this, you look at it, you enjoy it for a while, then you step back and you say, I'm going to redo the whole thing. So I probably will add like 20 more boards, <laughs> I don't know, into it, elevate it a little bit more. But... For now, I'm just going to enjoy it the way it is and get excited. Also, with up top here, we have some of uh, the Captain Power. Now, I'm going to add more to it and overflow it because the, I'm going to incorporate the bases down here, but it used to just kind of get pushed in the corner and just cover up what I was storing there. But now I want to display what's in the corner. I don't want it in the way, so there's a lot, lot to say, so i got to add more to this. And as for the old shelf, I'm going to do Indiana Jones there, so i got to kind of de- Spiral Zone it, put Indiana Jones set up in there. So I'm going to put the vintage Indiana Jones there, and I've already kind of shown where I'm storing the modern Indiana Jones, so I'm going to give more space to the modern and have plenty of room for vintage Indiana Jones here. So I've been kind of wanting to do that for a year, and so it's worth it. So what do you guys think about this project? Was this a good Retro Wednesday video? Did you like seeing it, hanging out and talking about retro stuff and building? Did your biggest takeaway from this video was it don't take any construction tips from Mike <laughs> because I'd probably advise that anyway let me know in the comments below like and subscribe so Jim hang around And that shot saved half the world, gentlemen. <laughs>